Welcome to the Empower Half Hour. This is a practical series about empowering you. The objective behind putting this series together is to give you a set of programs to empower you with a practical set of tools and techniques that you can use every single week to positively change your life. I've got two amazing people that are assisting me on the show. It's Mabatu Cieso and Alex Granger. And our objective with this series is to help you, to give you ideas, concepts, tools, practical stories that you can actually take home and use in your life. This first program or this first series we, we've called Desire and Dedication or the Bookends of Success. And what we're really wanting to tell you is that if you've got sufficient desire, in other words, you really want something, you know why you want it, and you apply yourself, you're really dedicated, you have discipline. And, and discipline's not a bad word. Discipline's a word that you, that you take, and it's very often disguised as that very dirty four-letter word called work. And if you prepare to be disciplined, and you prepare to have desire, or create enough desire, apply enough dedication, and keep yourself going with the right amount of discipline and that ugly four-letter word called work, you can create, have, do, and be absolutely anything. And what we're wanting to do today is we're wanting you, first of all, to get to know the three presenters that are going to be helping you along this journey because this is a journey. We're wanting to go on this journey together. We're wanting you to travel with us. We're wanting you to become the success you can be. And so, first of all, I'd like to go over to Mabatu and just ask you, can you share your background, where you've come from, and, and give us some nuggets, some ideas about who you are and what makes you tick? Yeah. You know, Andrew, all of us have a story to tell. And in our story, there is something and, or lessons in that story that you can use to help other people transform and become the best. As a little girl, I used to be incredibly shy, um, believe I was worth nothing. Um, felt like I was not as good as everybody else and it didn't help that I had a lot of life experiences that told me that I was not as good as anybody else. I was often discriminated against and I carried that belief of myself even in my work career. So as much as I'd studied because I've always wanted to be the best that I can be but this belief about myself uh, was a challenge when I worked into a, a, a work environment and I had an abusive boss who eventually showed to me that, hang on a minute, um, I was attracting abuse from him because partly I didn't believe that I, de I deserved the best or valued myself enough. So I was not giving him boundaries about how I needed to be treated. And I learned one fundamental message that life reflects back to you what you believe you deserve how you value yourself that's what it, it reflects back to you and hopefully through this show we can teach people to increase that personal power so they create experiences that they want and they believe that they can achieve their dreams because it starts with belief let me tell you it doesn't matter how many degrees you have so long as your belief system do not support where you want to go it'll be very difficult for you to achieve what you need to achieve maybe Alex you can come in and tell me us ab about your story and see what we can learn from that. No, I don't think I want to. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I'm, I'm very excited about your story because my story is probably completely opposite. You know, I was loudmouth in school. I grew up with a leadership mentality. You know, I wanted to take the lead in everything I did. And so as a young boy in school, if I played soccer, I wanted to be the captain. I wanted to score the most goals. And then when I wasn't good at that, then I started playing basketball and playing other things. But whatever I wanted to do, I wanted to be the best at it. I wanted to be the captain and I wanted everyone else to follow me. And, and I think that's the story of my life. And when I started working, my first job, my real first first job was as a temporary teacher out in Zimbabwe. And um, it's, an, it's, it's, it's something that really taught me a lot because I taught for a year and I never got paid. My mom was saying, why are you doing this? But I had a goal in mind. I wanted to just do something and, 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 and even if I didn't get paid for it, I wanted the experience. And after a while I woke up and I said, well, I actually need some money. And then I became a driver. And from being a driver to where I am today, I'm sales director at Tempest Car Hire. My journey has been absolutely exciting, but I have had to literally take hold of the opportunities that came my way. And so I'm looking forward to this series because Empower Half Hour is more than just empowering people to become better people. It's about awakening what you already have within you. And, and it's then just creating an appetite for the desire 
to be successful. And that's what really excites me, it's about living life to the fullest. And I know somebody in this room right now who lives life to the fullest, and that's Andrew Horton. Now, Andrew, you know you can't speak forever on your life because your life is, you've got just too much to share. But share with us some of the, the great experiences and, and who, who is Andrew? And why should you be on this show anyway? I mean, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alex. That's amazing. Um, it, has been, it has been an incredible journey. And I think um, where it really started for me was I, I grew up in very, very humble beginnings. Um, grew up in Primrose. And we, we used to really struggle. I, my, my, my biggest memories of growing up was this man that used to arrive on uh, quite a regular basis. <laughs> He'd arrive there with this, with this clipboard with a pink piece of paper on it. And uh, he'd stand at the door and the, all, all the workers would sort of walk out the door with tables and chairs and all sorts of things. And he'd carefully tick all these things off the, off the, off the list and off would go all the furniture. And then we'd be, we'd be left sitting in, a, in an empty home that night and with a bit of an empty belly. But the, the thing that really stood out for me the most was I remember sitting on the pavement and my car used to drive past. And, and I would see my car driving to my life. And, and, and so I started creating this desire. And, and I'd sit there and I'd go, this is where I am, but it doesn't mean this is where I've got to stay. And so what I used to do was I, I created that desire, created this picture. I had this vision of where I wanted my life to actually go. And then the second part was I said, well, if that's where I want to go, how am I going to make it happen? So I started to put things in place. I started every day. I committed to just be a little bit better today than I was yesterday. And slowly but surely over time, Eventually, um, with enough dedication, enough discipline, a lot of hard work, because, you know, as much as we'd like to think, well, you know what, it, it's got to be easy. Well, it takes, yeah. it, it takes, it does, it, it takes that, that four-letter word called work, and you, work. Need to, you, you need to put in that effort. And with that effort over time, it actually added up to, well, <laughs> I, I, I live a pretty successful life now. I follow my dream. I'm a, I'm a professional speaker. I wake up every morning excited. I love what I do, and I do what I love. And I think that's what I want our viewers to take away with them today. Is I want them to go and realize that it doesn't matter where you start. What matters is where you end up. I think what and connects I think, yeah. the three of us, Andrew, what's come through the different stories is hunger. And that's what desire is. is yeah. Desire is not a word from here. Desire comes from deep from the soul. It's about hunger. How hungry are you for success? Mm, that's true. And when we return after the ad break, we're going to be looking. In fact, you know what I want you to do? When we come back after the ad break, get out that pen and pad and actually start writing down. Because this is a program about application. Knowledge is not going to serve you. It's going to serve absolutely no purpose until you take that knowledge, you bring it into your life, and you make it into something successful. This whole, this whole first initial program has been about desire and dedication. And that's what I want you to do is get the desire. In other words, get a crystal clear picture in your mind of exactly what you want your future to look like. And then with commitment, with discipline, with work, start to make that happen for yourself. And if you want to contact us, please contact us on empowerhalfhour at yahoo.com. And have a look at the telephone number underneath here. That's our SMS line where you can contact us as well. And we'll be returning after the break with a whole lot of ideas, concepts, and some stories, some really practical stories that you'll be able to look and, and you'll see, my goodness, if those people could do it, why not me? We'll see you after the ad break. Welcome back to Empower Half Hour. This series is about application. So start thinking about getting yourself a pen and paper and start writing down some of these ideas, some of these tools, some of these nuggets that we're going to be sharing with you. Remember, desire and dedication. Start looking for that desire. Start finding that dedication. What we want to share with you now is we want to share with you some stories, some parables about people that have actually started from really humble beginnings and become super achievers. Alex, can you share some of those with us? Yeah, actually, 
as you're speaking, I was just thinking about my life and I'm looking back and I'm saying, well, you know, I shared in the, in the, in the first segment that I was a driver. You know, let me tell you, a driver at 21, I was excited. I mean, I was seeing the country, visiting a lot of places, staying in five-star hotels, eating fantastic food. And, you know, a lot of people out there could relate to that. You know, there are people who, who are doing that kind of work, nothing to be ashamed of. But I felt that there was more to life for me. I felt, you know what, I like to speak. Mm. I must do something about this thing. And I figured it out. I have to be in sales. This is it. I have to be in sales. And I worked my way up. I stayed in Zim for some time. I worked my way up to national sales manager of this company I worked for. And then I decided, you know, you know what, it's time to get, come back home. And I had to take a drop from being a national sales manager to a call center agent. And I remember when I, when I moved back to Joburg, I stayed in for Slorus. And I used to catch the pup on my bus. And I used to preach in the bus. And it was just not my calling, you know, to be, to be quiet. Preaching in the bus, singing in the bus, getting to work back at the call center, good morning, this is the company I work for. Yes, what, what would you like? And I just felt, you know, this is not what I want to do. There's more to life. I can't be in a call center catching a bus to work. I want to drive a car. And I used to see the car I want to drive. You know, you mentioned that earlier. I used to see the car I wanted to drive. And I started realizing in my own life, the only way I'm going to achieve much is turning that desire uh, into success. And I battled. And I think many people out there have to go through a near-death experience to actually get a wake-up call. Our viewers today have that opportunity not to go through that kind of experience where you have a car accident and then out of that, suddenly your life has to change now because you've realized that you're here for a purpose. Actually, you're already here for a purpose now before you almost die. And I realized that. And uh, I worked my way up to sales rep, to sales manager, changed companies a couple of times. And today I'm a sales director for, for a blue chip company that's listed on the stock exchange and I'm loving it. And on the side, I'm able to do these kind of things and I speak and I love it. And I like inspiring people to become better people. And I think that's exciting. And I know I'm not the only one with that kind of story to tell. Mabato, you have um, a, a wonderful story. I know you and I have spoken very often. Um, and why don't you share with us some of the things in your life that have that people can relate to and, and really take it from there. You know, I, I learn from stories and other people's stories. And, and people often say coming from humble beginnings means they have, they have to stay there. I, and and some, sometimes people are ashamed of have, coming from humble beginnings. But there is just actually so many things that we learn from our stories. This is what I want people to get because these are the things that are going to help them become successful. From a humble beginning, you can learn resilience. Yeah. You can learn to think on your feet. You can learn to be creative and hustle. These things set you up for success. Those very qualities set you up for success. I know many people who come from humble beginnings who've become something. The other day I was sharing a story with a good friend of mine and what I didn't realize is where she started off was a, as a domestic worker. She was a domestic worker who found her way of getting to study and getting sponsorship. Eventually, she's now completing her MBA and some, wow. as somebody senior in the financial services wow. sector. So it really doesn't matter where, where, where you begin. It, it's that desire. And desire for me is I really, 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 really want it. So there's got to be that feeling, that, that passion, that drive that says I really want and I'll do anything to get it. So for me, it's about the quality of the questions you ask yourself about yeah. how can I get from point here to point point B because as you start asking quality questions yeah. your mind orients towards finding solutions to how what steps can I take and having money is, is, is not uh, is not necessarily the challenge yeah. that other ways of getting where you want to want to be I through my desire to become the best that that I can be and I learned this through my MBA I studied an MBA and there was a concept called the learning organization and once I understood that that you constantly have to learn in order to grow I realized that that's what I wanted to be and I eventually became a director in a financial services company and I'm now doing what I love doing which is empowering other people to become the best that they can be. Andrew, I'm going to hand over to you to share also the stories that... Uh, uh, but you're right. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've realized as is, is my life's evolved as well is, is history serves only one purpose and, and, and you, you, you said that just now Alex, and, and you also as mm -hmm. well. History basically serves one purpose, and that purpose is lessons. What lessons? It's your tutor, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and as, long as, as long as you're learning lessons from it, but you're not living in the past, because all we really have is our now. And if we're living in the now, and we're taking action every single day to actually 
empower ourselves mm. and make our lives better. And we're letting history serve one purpose. Yeah. It's my teacher. What's what your have I story, learned? Andrew? What's well, your story, man? <laughs> I'm, I well, want to hear your you, story. You know what the, the, the amazing thing was? was my story was very simple. I was that little boy, that, yeah. that lost little boy that could have sat there and gone, I'm the, I'm the poor little old me. I'm lost. I'm, I'm in this really poor. <laughs> I am. I'm a victim. Yeah, I'm a victim. Mm. And the reality was I was a victim, but I didn't have to stay a victim. And that's, I think, where the, the, the message that we're wanting to get across to the viewers tonight. Absolutely. We're wanting everybody to sit there and we're wanting them to go, you know what? Why not me? And... I sat there and I looked at those cars, like I said, just, just like you did. And I looked at those cars and, and that, that was my car. He was driving my car to my life. And I created that crystal clear picture in my mind of that life. And then I asked myself the next important question is, if that's what I wanted, what did I need to do to I'll actually yeah. take me in that direction? And you know, if, let me tell you a story about, about a lady, um, 13 years old, fell mm -hmm. pregnant and had this child. Now, now, the child that she had was molested repeatedly until yeah. she turned 13. And at the age of 13, she eventually had a miscarriage herself. Yeah. And when you had to look at that person, you go, oh, what chance has that person got of having any success in your life? And I'm sure in, anybody sitting at home would, ask, would say, well, you know, yeah. mm. very unlikely that they're actually going to be successful. Well, what if I told you that that person was Oprah Winfrey? Yeah. You know, and I think very few people actually realize the really challenging life that she had and where she came from and i mean if she could come from poverty a pregnant mother at 13 who who came from absolute humble beginnings and turned herself into one of the one of the richest women in the world remember it's all about desire and dedication so i want you to go away and i want you to think i want you to explore and look inside yourself and say what do I really desire? I'm not saying, what do I want? What do I maybe need? It's, what do I really desire? Something that is a deep, passionate fire that's burning inside my belly. Find that. And then once you've found that, that deep-rooted desire, then start to say, okay, how much dedication am I going to have to put into delivering that into my life? When you have that, you have all the tools and techniques you need to start creating the life of your dreams. We're going to go over to Dr. John Martini, and he's going to wrap up this segment for us with some nuggets, some really great ideas that we can actually use. We'll see you back after this with your pen and paper. You can do it. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. John Martini. And I would love to share with you for just a moment something that has meant something to me and been helpful to me in my life that I believe will help you in your life. And that is the principle of compounding. Some people called it the principle of momentum, but compounding I think is really applicable. Just like you've probably heard, if you take a little bit of money and you put it into savings and you put it into some investment company or a bank, the bank or the investment company will give you some compound interest. And if you leave it there, it will start working for you. It will help you build your, your wealth. And so too, like a bank, you have a bank of knowledge. And if you invest in yourself with knowledge and feed your mind every day and take actions that are wise, that help you do what is inspiring to you, and every day just do a little bitty action step that helps you fulfill a big dream, you will build what is called momentum and get the same effect of compound interest in your life. And you'll get the long-term effect of compounding. Now what happens is, instead of having immediate gratification and spending your money and having no savings, by having a long-term vision, it pays. And your life can unfold the most magnificent life by the power of compounding. Now you want to do is on a daily basis, identify what you really would love to dedicate your life to. What is really important? Maybe sit down on a piece of paper and write that down or put that on your computer if you have a computer and define it. Define only what you're really inspired by and start working on it. Chunk it down into little action steps. And by doing baby steps, you get big dreams. And just every single day, do a little bit more. That's like putting a little bit more into savings. And eventually, the compound effect will work for you. And before you know it, the little bit that you worked on every day became a big dream that you get to have for your entire life. So every day, put the compounding effect on your half and your behalf. And let's go out and do something extraordinary together.
Welcome back to the Power Half Hour. Remember, today is about you, but it's about design dedication. Have you got your pen and paper out? Because this last segment is about taking all the knowledge that Alex, Mabatu, and myself have shared with you and actually bringing it into your life and making it work for you. Mabatu, have you got some practical ideas, some tools, some nuggets that you can share with our viewers today? You know, one of the places that, that you started off with uh, in terms of, of, of desire, you were saying, what, what do people really, really want? And I think for me, the quality of the questions are very, very important. Uh, one of the things that I ask myself is, what is my purpose? I'll never forget in 2007, I still have m minutes where I set an intention that I wanted to find out why am I here? What is my purpose? What am I passionate about? There's an interesting speaker called Janet Atwood who, who just deals with helping people find that passion because he says passion and God's will for you are one and the same thing. Okay? So these are the things that very often are behind desire. It's that need or desire to just want to give what, what you are good at and what you're best at. So, so for me, you're saying people should concretize that picture for themselves. And those are good places to start, is, is what is my purpose? What, what gives me joy? Uh, uh, what, what am I passionate about? Those things will lead you to the answer. In order to answer the question that you asked about, what is success? What is success for me? You know, it comes through the what gives you joy. What are you passionate about? What is your purpose? And then once I had that clarity, because clarity is important, once I had that clarity about what it is that I wanted to do, because at this point I'd already been successful in, in the corporate environment in a very tough uh, financial services uh, sector, but I wanted to do what, I was, what it was I was passionate about, which was self-development and being able to allow other people to shine their light and, and actualize their potential. Okay? Then I then said, what do I need to learn? In from a skills point of view, in order to do what I want to do very well. And I started doing more public speaking work. I invested in course wherever there was a course that I believe would enhance my ability to do what I needed to do. That's what I would do. And I use networks. I tell people what it is that I want to do because in conversations, you never know who can help you. So I started having conversations about what it is that I wanted to do. And I, started, uh, and, and I started allowing other people to help me along the way because there are always people who are willing to help you. Alex, you know, from a driver to a sales director, I mean, that's, that's certainly about desire and, yeah. and a whole lot of dedication and turning it into something. Give us some of those nuggets, some of the things that, that you can share with us mm -hmm. that, that some of our viewers can actually use and, and, and do something similar with their lives. I want to throw a curveball. Please now, because do. I think uh, often when we, when we talk about success, uh, the context is normally business. Mm. And I think, uh, I think success can be more than business. Mm. You know, uh, some people, I mean, I, I would have really liked to be a house husband, to be honest, and just chill out, look after the kids, <laughs> and the wife goes out and, you know, makes the money. And there's something wrong with it? My, my, <laughs> yeah, right. My biggest passion, my real, real, real passion, apart from, you know, inspiring people and, and, and helping people to become better, uh, is music. I love to write music. In fact, the yeah. power of our yeah. jingle uh, was, was written and sung by you. Yes. Mm. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. But I, I really enjoy it. And, and actually, I mean, I've been singing all my life. I don't enjoy singing as much as I enjoy writing. And I'll tell you why. Because you're not good at singing. Well, apart from your misconception, <laughs> I, I actually can sing public. I can, yeah. But the reason I really like writing music is once I've written the music and I've taught a group, right. I like to see somebody else putting life into the song. And that's a, that's a passion. And I think when we're talking about desire and dedication, um, we don't want to paint a picture that it's always going to be rosy. Because, you know, I don't want, to, you know, Empower Half Hour is not a show about uh, this floating thing everything's nice, hunky-dory, hum. Hey, listen, you've got to work. You cannot just do nothing. And I know a lot of people don't put pen to paper. I hope you've got your pens and papers out there. But this is what I did. Got a piece of paper and I said to myself, time for an audit. Who is Alex? What does Alex want to become? And how does Alex need to get there? And you need to solicit help of people, like my butter was saying earlier. And until you write things down and start putting actual goals in place to say, this is where I am, this is where I want to be, how do I bridge that gap? How do you actually measure your success? And so that's how you develop the desire, the hunger. And it goes back to your purpose. You know, the, when you start living a life of purpose, 
about the things that you're passionate about. Mm. It's, like, it's like a hobby that you get paid for. You excel at it because you're the eighth wonder of the world. It's just who you are. And things that you do naturally out of yourself, you excel in. And so you gotta go back a few steps and say, okay, well, what am I good at? What do I like? Well, you know, am I just a receptionist because I needed a job? Am I just a director because I needed a job? But no, actually I want to be a, let me think, I want to be a hunter because I just enjoy the passion of going around at night with my gun and the target skills and all that kind of stuff. And if you're crazy and hungry and, and passionate about that, follow your dream. Follow your dream. You're gonna fall in trip now and again. That's just nothing. Get up and follow your dream. And I know I'm not the only one who's gone through that kind of, you, you've shared a lot of great stuff uh, about, about this. And I want to hear a bit more about your stories and, and how you can also give us some of these nuggets about desire and dedication. Alex, thanks. You, you're absolutely right. <laughs> the first thing, it's very seldom that somebody exceeds their own expectations, am I right? I mean, if, unless yeah. you've got huge expectations. It was Les Brown, and he said, people don't miss achieving their full potential, not because they aim too high and, and, and miss, it's because they aim too low and hit. Yeah. So what we're saying is, is we're saying, get out there and start to have huge expectations because expectations is, is desire. So start to have huge expectations, Allow yourself to, to stretch yourself outside that comfort zone. Start to understand that your comfort zone is self-imposed. It's not, it's not real. It's not a real thing. It's self-imposed. And if you can start to appreciate that and realize that, okay, what is the first thing I need to do? The first thing I need to do is to say, what does success really mean to me? Does it mean a fancy car because that's what society says? Does it mean a fancy house because that's what society says? Well, we look at Lindsay Lohan, and I mean, she's got all of those things. Is that success? And so until you define what success really means to you, in other words, do that audit that you described, where are we actually headed? And that's the important thing they need to do is know where you are, have those huge expectations, create that massive desire within yourself, and then go about the business of creating a plan, a step-by-step -step plan that's going to take you there. Because when you have a plan, that's what's going to make you successful. Because if you arrive at your driveway in the morning and you have no plan, do you go left, do you go right, do you go straight? But if you have a plan, you can go to exactly where you want yeah. to go. And that's what I want you to do today, is I want you to take control of your life, empower your life today, and decide that you are in charge. We'll see you back next week. Same time, same place with a whole lot of new ideas. And don't forget to bring that pen and paper. See you next week.